What's going on Guardians? My name is The Black Link and it's finally happened. We have finally seen what's going to be coming in the content formerly known as Joker's Wild, now only referred to as the Season of the Drifter. Bungie's Vidoc has finally come out and it has shown us an awful lot about what we're getting. We've got a new game mode, Gambit Prime, we've got some new armor sets, some new weapons, a little bit of story cut in there, some word about the revelry, and even a bit of light shed on the season of the Redacted, now known as the Season of Opulence. All this and more was covered in an 8 minute Vidoc that Bungie put out earlier today. And in this video, we're going to be covering some of the biggest bits of information therein. Let's go ahead and dive on in. Now, the Season of the Drifter is, of course, going to be following the namesake character there, the Drifter. And the Vidoc starts off by letting us know that the Drifter is going to have his own personal space in this upcoming season. We're going to be heading straight to his ship and exploring some of the secrets of the mystery cargo that he's been towing around. And here we get some great shots at his ship as well as some of the brand new armor we'll be earning over the course of Season of the Drifter. And throughout the Vidoc, we actually get to see a little bit of a schedule for the upcoming Season 6 that details out some of the things that you can expect to see as part of the annual pass ranging from March all the way to May. This includes the new Gambit game mode, Gambit Prime, a new activity titled The Reckoning, the Invitations of the Nine, two new brand new exotic quests, and finally a new activity titled The Revelry, all of which gets described in a bit more detail as this goes on. They go on to acknowledge some of the mistakes that they made during Black Armory and kind of gating players out of enjoying that brand new activity on day one and say that they basically want everyone who owns the season pass, or rather the annual pass, to be able to jump in to the new activities right off the bat. And in order to help with that, they've introduced a brand new system of Power Surge bounties. These are bounties that are specifically designed to get you up to around 640 power within the first few hours of gameplay. We get to see a very quick clip of some of these power surge bounties. And as you can see there, they even tell you the power level of the drops that they're going to give you. Complete public events and destination bounties throughout the system. Grants power 640 gear on completion. So it looks like this is gonna be a great way for players who are still trying to make their way towards 650 power to get caught up on day one so that they can jump right into some of the new content. Definitely a great change that expands upon the catch-up mechanics that they've been slowly introducing since the Season of the Forge went live. And of course, all of this game of catch-up is to make sure that you're ready for the new game modes like Gambit Prime. They state that the first thing you're going to want to do when you log in when the Season of the Drifter starts is head straight to the Drifter's new destination. There you'll be introduced to Gambit Prime, and I guess our brand new gameplay loop is going to come into effect. You play Gambit Prime, which unlocks a new mode called The Reckoning. You head into that, you complete it, and that gets you armor that you can bring back into Gambit Prime. And in that, they kind of detail the gameplay loop that we'll be experiencing when Season of the Drifter goes live. But we also get to see some pretty interesting story stuff. The Emissary of the Nine shows up in this, meaning we'll likely be learning more about that mysterious faction as this goes on. But let's talk about Gambit Prime, one of the new premier game modes within the season of The Drifter. This is described as being the sweatier version of Gambit, and it's going to come with quite a few little changes that you'll have to pay attention to. First up, this is a single round game mode that is supposedly going to be evolving as time goes on, and I do believe the way it's going to evolve is via the use of the different roles that players will be able to take while playing through it, but it being a single round already is going to make this a very quick, very sweaty game mode. And to help along with that is the fact that now players can drain moats from their enemy teams. We're not exactly sure how this is done, but in combination with stuff like invasions, that's going to be a huge game changer. Additionally, there's also going to be more raid-like mechanics when it comes to facing down your primeval boss. So it seems like it's going to be a bit more complicated than just killing the primeval envoys and then triple chaos reaching your primeval down. Which is definitely exciting, I'm wondering what kinds of mechanics they're going to be shoving in here. Additionally, we're finally getting the advent of Gambit Private Matches. This is something a lot of players have been asking for for a long time and they confirmed it in this Vidoc. You will be able to set up some private Gambit Matches, maybe for tournaments, maybe if you want to explore the map that will be a feature coming in the Season of the Drifter. 
Next up, they talked about some of the roles that players take when playing in Gambit. Of course, you have the people who are just going in and killing everything in sight to make moats. You have the people who collect those moats. You have the people who do nothing but invade, and you have the big damage people who take on the primevals. Well, it seems like we're going to be leaning more into those specified roles during the season of the Drifter. And we're even going to get some armor sets to reflect that. And they showed us this via the use of named roles for different types of players in Gambit. First off, we've got the Reaper, the Scythe of Destruction, aka the person who goes in and kills as many adds as possible. Then we've got the Collector, Commander of the Dark, who's that person who just goes around collecting all of the motes that the Reaper leaves. Next is the Impassable Wall, the Sentry, which is the player who's focused on your bank, protecting it and getting rid of all the Taken that your enemy team sends. AKA my favorite player in Gambit. And then finally, of course, we've got the Lethal Assassin, the Invader, that person who's going to jump through that portal and make the enemy team's life a living nightmare. These are, of course, the four established roles that players generally tend to fall into when playing Gambit. And I'm glad they're getting kind of an official title here from Bungie. We are going to be getting armor sets that are specifically designed for each of these roles. And we'll be talking about that in the game mode that you'll be playing outside of Gambit Prime, The Reckoning. Since these armor sets drop from that game mode and will reflect the type of player that you are. Whether or not that means that we're going to be getting armor sets that have specific perks that help with those different roles. Well, that's yet to be seen, but I've got high hopes for it. Anyways, moving on, we get a look at two brand new Gambit maps. First off on Mars, we've got New Arcadia. This map is going to be dropping on the first week of the season of the Drifter. And then on the second week, we'll be getting Deep Six, a map taking place on Titan. They both look pretty cool, and I'm really happy to finally get some different world spaces to play on for this game mode. Next up, we get a look at some of the brand new Gambit Prime weapons. We get some great shots of the brand new Spare Rations Legendary Hand Cannon a sniper rifle known as the Soul Survivor, and then the Doomsday Grenade Launcher. We also get to see a brand new Gambit auto rifle shotgun and what looks to be a brand new pulse rifle as well, though the names for those aren't exactly given. So that pretty much covers most of the Gambit Prime game mode, and it's awesome to know that you'll be able to jump into that as an annual pass owner right when Season of the Drifter goes live. We're not going to have to repeat the experience of trying the new activity, getting beaten up, and then having to head back to the Dreaming City to power up some more. It's great to know that we'll be able to start this right when the season starts. But after that, once you've completed your first match of Gambit Prime, you're going to get access to a brand new activity, The Reckoning. This is going to take place on the Plane of the Nine, that same world space we used to go to during Trials. And let me tell you, this game mode looks intense. The Reckoning is going to be a pinnacle PvE activity that's going to unlock after your first game of Gambit Prime. It takes place inside the Drifter's Ball. And if I were to have to describe it, I would actually describe it the same way the devs do in the video. You remember the dark maze and bridge section of Crota's End way back in Destiny 1? This is like an entire in-game game mode based around that. This is going to be a tiered activity, so we'll have access to Tier 1 on the first week. And it seems like it's going to be a race through time where you and your fire team are going to have to very quickly push through huge waves of enemies, completing whatever objectives line themselves up on the way. It's a timed activity and over the course of the next couple of weeks is going to unlock higher difficulty tiers. But what's the point of running the reckoning? What are you going to be getting from it? Well, every week when you complete it, you'll be walking away with some very specific new gear. This game mode rewards you with a brand new armor set that is tailor-made for the Gambit Prime game mode. And boy, do I have to say, it looks good. Each piece of this new armor set is going to have the snake decal for the Drifter lit up on it, and the color of that decal is going to correlate with the role that the armor plays in Gambit Prime. Remember, Sentry, Invader, Scythe, all that kind of stuff. So, say if you're an invader, you're rocking that red, intimidating set. While if you're a sentry, you're rocking a set with the lit up yellow snake. It kind of reminds me of some of the chroma gear we used to have back in Destiny 1, and I'm really happy they're kind of leaning back towards that, at least in the aesthetics department when it comes to some of this in-game armor. We get a great look at these armor sets throughout the course of this Vidoc. And I really do love the unique sort of feel that it has when compared to some of the other armor sets that we have currently in Destiny 2. But this is the direction that they're taking gear customization moving forward. I'm definitely happy to see them lurch back towards what we used to have in Destiny 1. 
Additionally, it looks like they're going to be expanding upon the aura system that we really haven't seen used since the Nightfall emblems from back in year one of Destiny 2. If you take a look at this scene right here, you'll see that all of the guardians in this waiting room have an aura above their heads. And I imagine that probably has to do with maybe wearing a full set of this Gambit Prime Reckoning gear. Or maybe just having a full set on that corresponds to the role that you want to play. It's going to be really exciting to see how all of this is going to be set up and we get to jump into this in just a week or so. Next up, we get a quick look at some new Pinnacle weapons, including a brand new Pinnacle Crucible submachine gun, a new Vanguard Pinnacle Scout Rifle, which from the quick clip that we get to see here seemingly has the Firefly or Dragonfly perk, and even a quick mention of a brand new spring activity titled The Revelry. But after that, they say some pretty interesting stuff about some of the content we'll be diving into aside from Reckoning and Gambit Prime. On week two of the Season of the Drifter, we'll be starting off the exotic quest to get the Thord. And believe me, there is no more innuendo here. They show the Thord, the Titan, the monster of Destiny 1 Year 1 off in its full glory in this Vidoc. And we'll be starting off our exotic quest to get this mighty weapon of old on week 2 of the Season of the Drifter, which I just have to say makes me feel pretty good. I was a little bit upset that we had to wait so long to get the last word in the Season of the Ford, so it looks like they're going to be starting things off a little bit earlier this time around, although I wouldn't be surprised if the Thorn quest itself was still time-gated. I hope it isn't. I hope it's like the last word where if you put in a lot of effort, you can get it right from the start. Or rather, you can get it in one day if you're pretty good at PvP. I really hope Thorn is the same way because I don't want to have to time gate for four or five weeks to get this thing finished. You guys know, Thorn was always my favorite exotic back in Destiny 1. It was the first exotic I got. And I am psyched to see it come back. And oh, I cannot wait to hear some of the complaints about it. We do get to see it firing a couple of shots. And while we can't extrapolate too much from it, it does look like the weapon has a little bit of kick to it. We're not really sure what type of rate of fire it's going to be in, but I for one am very happy that we'll be getting our hands on it soon. Finally, they end the video by talking a bit about how they want to make Destiny a more quick reacting live game, meaning they want to have more regular content coming out and they're having conversations about what's going to be happening after the annual pass ends with the season of opulence no longer the season of redacted they give us the name officially the season of opulence due out later this year and yes they even confirm something is coming after that but we do get a couple of quick shots of us being back on the leviathan exploring some new areas so it seems like there's going to be plenty more content coming from bungie in the future and i for one am really excited to see where this franchise goes next but all right, Guardians, that is pretty much it for your wrap-up of the Bungie Vidoc Season of the Drifter. There was a lot of stuff in there. There's a lot of stuff to unpack. And I, for one, am really excited to jump into some of this stuff when the Season of the Drifter goes live. But all right, Guardians, that is it for this wrap-up video. Was there anything we missed? Be sure to let us know down in the comment section below. Are you psyched for the Season of the Drifter? Are you bummed it's no longer called Joker's Wild? How do you feel about stuff like Gambit Prime, The Revelry, The Reckoning, and all the things that you got to see in this video? Be sure to let us know down in the comment section below. If you enjoyed, feel free to drop a like, make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell to stay up to date with all the latest stuff we're putting out. But all right, Guardians, it's gonna be it for this one. Thank you all so much for watching. And as always, I am the Black Link. You Guardians, stay frosty. And we'll see you in the season of The Drifter.